so, Mr. Toberty, just if we could have your opening statement, please. Of course, Kerr here, like the deputies. Um, good morning to you all, and, and, and first, let me thank you for acceding to my request to, to come before you today. We felt it was really important uh, to be here. Um, I've always believed in the importance of public service. Um, I was brought up that way, and I have great respect for the Oireachtas as an institution. Uh, I've come here, as, as you know, voluntarily, because I believe in the work that you as a committee are doing. I don't say that in any other way other than that I want to assist in every way I can. I appreciate that you'll have a lot of questions, so I'm going to try to keep my opening statement as short as possible. Uh, I begin by clearly and unambiguously at the very outset this morning uh, state that, that I'm truly sorry for all of this and for any part which I have played, and uh, be it consciously or unconsciously, and anything that has contributed to the debacle that, that we're dealing with today. Uh, I'd like to apologise to the committee that they've had to put, take this time to deal with this matter today, and to my colleagues in RTE and to my listeners. So, given the events of the last three weeks, there is a lot that I wish to uh, say, and there's a lot that I need to say. And so please bear with me. My aim today is to help correct and clarify some very serious matters, and I'll be relying on my agent, Noel Kelly, here to go through the figures and provide greater detail. Uh, I'd like everybody here today to understand that the figures and statements presented by RTE over the last few weeks in relation to my remuneration have created a fog of confusion. A fog of confusion over what I was paid, and when I was paid, and what I knew, and when I knew it. Full transparency and disclosure on RTE's part, I'm sorry to say, would simply have avoided so much of this. And I'm here to do one thing and one thing only, ladies and gentlemen and, and, and committee members, and that is to set the record straight and to call out some untruths. And it is my belief that there are seven material untruths that I'd like to address. And the first is as follows. This claim that I did not take a pay cut from RTE in 2020, this is not true. I took a 20% pay cut from RTE in my 2020 to 2025 contract. Simple as that. I took a 20% pay cut from RTE. I'm obliged to do and present 205 radio shows and 38, as it was then, live two-hour late, late shows under this contract. I am what's called an independent contractor. I get no pension or entitlements from RTE. That's the nature of it. Under the terms of my contract, I'm allowed to do additional work outside of RTE. That's the, also the nature of it. And I stress that there is nothing morally, ethically, or legally wrong with me or any independent contractor doing additional work for another client outside of RTE. But to be clear, I took a pay cut from RTE of 20% in 2020 for each of the five years of my contract at a cost of €525,000 to me over the length of that contract. It's an awful, it, 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 I'll move on to my second untruth. The suggestion that my decision to retire from the Late Late Show was prompted by this whole debacle. This is not remotely true. I wasn't aware of any of this fiasco when I decided to retire from the Late Late Show. I made my initial decision to leave the Late Late Show pretty much a year ago. It was very personal. It was made in the heart and in the soul. Around this time, I mentioned it to those closest to me, my family and my agent and, and, and a few others, and they were surprised. They were very surprised. Why would you leave such a show? And I explained to them, and eventually brought them around to my way of thinking, that among other things, I had left a lot of me on the floor in the studio after COVID and during COVID. I was burnt out, being honest with you, and I was exhausted. A lot of people in this country, as you know, were burnt out and exhausted after COVID, doing a lot more important jobs than I was doing, but I'm just telling you from where I'm coming from. So I turned it over in my mind over a few months, but by the time I got to January, there was no turning over in my mind. I knew it was time to go. I made the decision. And just, just to, to make it abundantly clear, there is zero connection between my departure and this very raw situation of recent weeks. I informed management on March 13th of this year. I first became aware of this Grant Thornton review in May, some two months later, and even then I had no inkling of the bombshell which was to come when RT released their statement on June 22nd. The third untruth is that I was covertly or secretly overpaid by RT. This is not true. I was not overpaid by RT at any point. I fully accept I am very, very well paid. I understand that. But I was fully paid in accordance with my contract, which my agent, agent negotiated openly 
and honestly and in good faith. There are no overpayments. Now, there are RTE's under declarations, which we challenged them on back in 2020. And there are indeed RTE's over declarations, of which they actually paid me in 2020 and 2021. This has caused justifiable anger among my colleagues. I understand that. And we're going to deal with all of that in the next few hours, and indeed the next six hours or more. We'll stay for as long as it takes. The upshot of RTE's inaccurate declarations is an impression that I have been less than honest. This is not the case. The fourth untruth is that I was aware that RTE were trying to conceal payments to me. This is not true. I was not aware that RTE were concealing payments to me. RTE acknowledged this in their statement of June 22nd, 2023, when they stated that Grant Thornton had made no findings against me. The fifth untruth, there was a secret agreement with Renault that I tried to conceal. This is not true. But not only that, it beggars belief. Think about it. I had a separate commercial agreement with Renault, the basis of which was that I would make public appearances and perform road shows and things for them. And the work that I've done for Renault is all over social media. The suggestion that was a secret makes no sense. The sixth on, on truth, that Ortiz's underwriting of Renault's payment obligations was a secret. This is not true. Ortiz's underwriting of Renault's payment obligations was not a secret, as the documents we have prepared for you today show. And as my agent will explain in more detail, Ortiz committed in February 2020 to provide this guarantee in the early stages of contract negotiations around my 2020 to 25 contract. This is unequivocally confirmed in an email dated critical document, 20th of February 2020, from Breda O'Keefe to my agent. It was copied to other members of the executive board, the director general, the RTE solicitor's office, everyone in RTE who needed to know knew. You'll find this on page 10 of the booklet of documents you have in front of you. Far from being secret, it was well known. And finally, the seventh untruth that I did not ask RT about their under declarations of my earnings. When they released the 2017, 18 and 19 earnings, as they did all in one day, January 20th, 2021, this is a question I did not ask at the time. This is a question I should have asked. I fully, fully accept that. But I will try and explain briefly and as clearly as humanly possible. At the end of the 2015 to 20 contract, my agent advised me that I was entitled to a phenomenally large figure payment of 120,000 euro that has been variously called a loyalty or an end of contract or a, an exit payment. I did not invoice for that payment. I did not pursue that payment and I did not receive any payment. The documents provided to you bear this out. In my simple view, I had foregone that payment for 120,000 euro, not taking it. But because of how RTE reported that decision in their accounts, Kihirlak, the narrative of the last three weeks has been that not only did I take this payment, but that I somehow contrived to hide it. So let me reiterate, I actually waived my entitlement to this payment and I didn't receive one cent of it. I hid nothing. I had nothing to hide. As the evidence provided to you today shows, my agent had already pointed out to RT in 2020 that we thought the manner in which they were planning to account for my earnings in 2017, 18 and 19 was incorrect. And we had understood that they accepted our position so that by the time they released the figures, I assumed that the chief financial officer, the financial professionals in RTE and the external auditors who had audited the accounts in these years, 17, 18, 19, had accountancy reasons for accounting for it the way they did. So I'd like to add that my company earnings fully reflect what I earned in these and all subsequent years. I'm particularly upset and disappointed about the decision and framing of the RT statement of June 22nd, which inextricably linked my name to this whole fiasco. My name was mentioned 15 times in that statement. 15 times. And I was not consulted once. I did not have the Grant Thornton report, which RT had, and which RT acknowledged made no findings of wrongdoing on my part. I asked RT to clarify that this was the case. They did. Four days, four days after much of the, da much of the damage was done, pretty much all of the damage was done. I signed a contract in good faith. I declared my earnings. I paid every cent of tax. 
My employer has acknowledged that. It has engaged in deceptive practices to pay me practices that were hidden from me. The result, I'm nearly finished, but forgive me for overgoing. The result of this is that I've become the face of a national scandal. I've been accused of being complicit, deceitful and dishonest. I think the statement of June the 22nd was very unhelpful in this regard. The full truth was concealed. I take full responsibility. I can't say it enough. I take full responsibility for not asking more questions back on January the 20th, 2021, when the figures for that 2017, 18 and 19 were released. I take responsibility for that, I understand. But as be has become abundantly clear and obvious in the last three weeks, this highlights the existence of two RTEs. Two. There are those who are involved in attempting to conceal payments and who are in a position to call me or call my agent and ask for our help in establishing the full facts. Instead, they chose to hurriedly issue a deeply, deeply damaging statement on June 22nd, which failed to include the full facts. I have nothing but respect and admiration for that great number of decent, hardworking people in RTE, my colleagues, my friends. And I'm very sorry for those whose lives have been made difficult with an incessant dripping of new revelations. I'm thinking particularly of my radio show colleagues and friends, that they've had to be put through all of this for reasons not of their own making. They work hard. They all work hard in RTE. And I want to thank those colleagues who have supported me through these last few weeks. And in closing, I'd like to thank the many people from across the country who have taken time to stop me on the street, decent Irish citizens taking my shoulder and my elbow in their hands and saying, you'll get through this. I have nearly a foot off the ground high, ground high of cards and letters from people who have written to Ryan Tuberty Dublin. And I got them fair play to the post people in on post. And I thank the Irish people for that. I am hopeful that they will see from my statement and my appearance here today that I am determined to inform them of the truth and to demonstrate that I have nothing to hide. And I'm also hopeful that I will soon get back on air to do the job I love. Thank you all for your patience. Thank you, Mr. Tuberty. Uh, Mr. Kelly.